trials, where there are people who don't want that person to be around them. That person is not appreciated by others. That person is not loved by others. Receptive brothers and sisters, I want to always remi- I want to remind you that if you are ever in that state, if you are ever, if you find yourself in a position that you are not appreciated by anyone, you feel like that there is no one that's out there looking out for you, if you feel that you are not loved by anyone, always remember that there is still someone who loves you. And that love is considered as unconditional love. That is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. <coughs> always remember that Allah loves you. If there is no one in this world who cares about you, Allah cares about you. If there is no one who's looking after you, Allah is looking after you. All of you being here for Salat al-Jumu'ah is a sign that Allah loves you. You remember Allah is a sign that Allah loves you. Allah loves us. The Prophet ﷺ one time was sitting with well, he was sitting with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he saw a woman frantically looking around for her child. She's going here, she's going there, looking for her baby. As soon as she finds her baby, she picks that child up and she hugs that child. Prophet ﷺ, he says, and he asks, he, he questions his companions, that could you ever imagine this woman throwing her baby into a fire? The Prophet, the Sahaba of Allah Taala Anhu said, "O oh Prophet of Allah, we cannot even fathom this. We cannot imagine this." The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah loves His slaves seventy times more than this woman is showing love to her child. I want to share a story with you that I came across. I read somewhere. There was, a, there was a child that while he was growing up, he had, you know, one thing that he had to go through was to know that he had a mother. This child had a mother and she only had one eye. She only had one eye. <coughs> this child, when he would go to school, he would feel embarrassed. Whenever his mother would come to pick him up, he would feel embarrassed that everyone else is fine, my mom has only one eye. He would feel shy about it, he would feel embarrassed about it. His his friends would come around and they would say something about that. They had a comment about that. This made him very uncomfortable. And he would tell his mother specifically that I don't want you to come around me when I'm around my friends. When I'm at school, don't come around me. This child grew up with this resentment and this kind of embarrassment in his heart. But he wanted to not only just keep that embarrassment in his heart, but he chose to stay away from his mother. So as a result, when he grew up, he chose to go somewhere else where he does not have to see his mother. He can study somewhere else and he can become a successful man. Well, Allah gave him what he wanted. He went somewhere else, he became successful, he earned his degree, he got, he began to pursue his career, and he got a good job. Later on, he got married in his life. And it said that when he got married, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him children. And it said that one day, his mother came around looking for him. She knocked on his door, and he opened that door, his daughter opened the door, looking at this woman, he became frightened and he he ran inside. This son comes and he sees and he recognizes that this is my mother. This is my mother. And he, instead of welcoming her, he told her off. He disrespected her. And he told her that you came here and you scared my children. He told her, I don't want you to ever come back here around. She said, fine. 
she went back home to her hometown. He receives a letter that there is about to be a school reunion taking place. And everyone of this year who graduated this year is welcome to come. He tells his wife that I'm going on a business trip, but he goes to that, he goes to that reunion. When he goes to that reunion, he, fe he feels that let me go home and let me see what's going on with my old home, the house I grew up in. So he goes to that house. When he goes there, he finds no one there. He goes to the next door neighbor and he says that there used to be an old woman living over here. Do you know anything about her? They told him that she has passed away. So he says that did she leave anything behind? And he says, and they said yes. It was a letter that they left, that she left behind. Are you the son? And he says, yes. You know, this letter is for you. So he begins to read that letter. And respected brothers and sisters, you see the love a mother has for her child. She writes in that letter that, oh my son, the only thing I ever wanted was to be close to you. That's all I wanted. You are a piece of my heart. I cared about you. But you felt embarrassed whenever I did come around you. And then she, she wrote in that letter that the reason you see me one-eyed is because when you were young, you were in an accident. And you had lost an eye. And the doctors told me, I gave the suggestion that is it possible I will sacrifice one of my eyes for my own son. She writes, I gave up my eye so that you do not get behind in this dunya. I gave up my eye so that you don't feel embarrassed and awkward around others. This is the mother. I mean, every time I think about this, it brings tears to my eyes. Because this is what a mother is willing to do for her own child. Now once again, think about this. Allah loves us more, 70 times more than our mothers love us. Let that sink in. Respected brothers and sisters, if Allah loves us this much, the question that we need to ask for ourselves is, do we love Allah? Do we love Allah? I ask all of you this question. Imagine you show your children the love and they turn back and they give you a cold shoulder. Could you, could you any of you digest that? I guarantee none of you can digest that. The question is, do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I want to share with you another story about another youngster. This youngster, what he would do is that he told his mother that I have to go and study. I have to go and study. And his mother said that I will let you go only on the condition that at that time they never had emails, they never had Skype. You have to write me a letter every single month. And he agreed that I will write a letter for you every single month. But there was one thing that this woman could not do. She could neither read nor write. So every single month, this, child, this youngster, this, this teenager, he would write a letter to his mother. And when she would receive this letter, she would go to her next door neighbor, to a woman who had the capacity to read and write, and she would give her that letter and tell her, tell me what my son has written for me. And so she would read the whole thing. Well, one time, she received a letter. She went to her next door neighbor, and she was not there. And this desire just to know what's on that letter was making her uncomfortable. She just wanted to know what's on that letter. So, so now, in order for her to be independent, she thought the best way is for me to learn how to read and write. So then she began to read, learn how to read and write. And she went through many pains. She went through so much 
just to learn how to read and write. Well, after that, whenever her son would send a letter to her, now first it was someone else reading the letter to her. This time she's reading the letters for herself. She would read those letters every single day. She would read those letters every single day. The old letters, she would take them out and read them every single day. Why? Because she loved her son. Because of her immense amount of affection, she would read those letters. Respected brothers and sisters, we also have the letters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's called the Qur'an. How much do we read the Qur'an? Ask yourself this question. How many times every day, or what, how many times during the week, do you pick up the Qur'an and read the letters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because when you do that, when you take time out every day and you pick up the Qur'an and you read the Qur'an, that is a manifestation of your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the letters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respected brothers and sisters, once again, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, how much do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look around us. Allah has given us everything. Look at the dunya and the, look at dunya around us. This, if we if we actually sit down and ponder what's around us, I guarantee you, this will create within our heart an appreciation for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, In fi khalqi samawati wal ard, wa khtilaf al layli wal nahari la ayatin li ulil albab. Ponder over what's around you. Alladina yadkurun Allah qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim wa yatafakkarun. Yatafakkarun. Wa yatafakkarun. Fi khalqi samawati wal ard. People, we don't, receptive brothers and sisters, we don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Wallahi, we don't know who Allah is. Today, I can sit down with a person who's in the IT field, and I can tell that person, talk about your industry. Talk about what you do. And he can talk about his IT, coding, whatever he does, for hours and hours. Sit down with a physician, he can talk to you about medicine for hours and hours. Sit down with a kid today, one, from one week, one week from today is the Super Bowl. Which teams are in the Super Bowl? Who are the quarterbacks of, the, of those two teams? The wide receivers, the defensive players, what is the strengths of the, each team, the weaknesses of each team? That youngster, that adult can sit down with you and talk to you on hours end. Receptive brothers and sisters, I ask you, if you were to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much can you talk about Allah? The one who gave us everything. The one who has created everything around us. The one that we claim to love. The one, the one that we claim that our entire life is for Allah. Do we really know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is? Sit down with your child today at home and tell them, Yalla, go talk to me about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell me who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Respected brothers and sisters, we cannot. Is this what, is this what love is? Is this what love is? Look at the entire Qur'an, from cover to cover, Allah is talking about Himself. There is something considered as a landlord. The landlord owns the structure of the house or the building. You have a tenant who owns the contents of that building or that, or that house. Allah says, Allah owns the entire dunya. Allah What exists in this dunya, Allah is also the owner. Allah has the keys of the unseen. That no leaf drops from a tree. Think about in the season of fall. How many, how many leaves fall off the tree? Subhanallah, Allah says that I have knowledge of every single leaf that is falling off the tree. This is who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. 
The other day, I went to go visit a, uh, a young brother of ours who fell off, and he's here, alhamdulillah, today with us. He fell off a horse, and he injured himself. I went to the hospital with a doctor in our community, and that physician, that doctor was explaining to me that what an amazing machine Allah has created us. This human being, this body that Allah has given us, the how the mind is connected to every single part in the body. Who has created this? لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيلٍ It is Allah who has created this. Respected brothers and sisters, if I don't know who Allah is, if I cannot describe who Allah is, then where will the love of Allah come from? How will the love of Allah come within our heart? And I want you to think about this, because there are channels of learning. You know how you learn in life? Either by hearing, by seeing, by comprehending, and by talking about it. This is how you learn anything. The Sahaba, they would hear about the greatness of Allah. The Sahaba would visualize the greatness of Allah. أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُقِحَتْ Can we describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah so beautifully in such a beautiful way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one time walked by and he saw an A'rabi, a Bedouin man. He was making dua. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he stood there, he was just passing by but when he heard this man, the way he was describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he stood there and he just waited to listen to this person. This person, he's, just, he's making dua. And he, before he makes his dua, he's describing and he's, he's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is done in such a beautiful way. He says, Ya man la tarahu al-uyu. Oh you that no eye can see. Wa la tukhalituhu al and no mind can comprehend. وَلَا يَصِفُهُ الْوَاصِفُونَ And nothing can describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way He is to be described. وَلَا تُغَيِّرُهُ الْحَوَادِرُ The situations on earth, the situations do not affect Him, do not change Him. وَلَا يَخْشَ الدَّوَائِرُ The passing of time does not create fear within Him. يَعْلَمُ مَثَاقِيلَ الْجِبَادِ this is a man describing Allah. يَعْلَمُ مَثَاقِينَ الْجِبَالِ That you know the weight of the mountains. وَمَكَائِينَ الْبِحَارِ And the volume of the oceans. وَعَدَدَ قَطْرِ الْأَمْطَارِ It is within your knowledge. And you know how many drops there does exist of all the oceans put together. وَعَدَدَ وَرْقِ الْأَشْجَارِ And you have the knowledge of every single leaf on every single tree. وَعَدَدَ مَا أَظْرَمَ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ And every single thing that night brings is dark upon us does exist within your knowledge. وَأَشْرَقَ عَلَيْهِ النَّهَارِ And everything the sun brings is light upon does exist within your knowledge. وَلَا تُوَارِي مِنْهُ سَمَاءٌ سَمَاءً That no sky can hide its content. No sky can hide from another sky. No, no sky can hide another sky from you, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ولا, then he says ولا بحر ما في قاري, And what does exist at the depth And in the darkness of the ocean That also is within your knowledge ولا بح, ولا جبل ما في وعري, And what exists in the deepest and darkest caves of any mountain That also does exist within your knowledge And then he says وجعل خير عمري آخرة, Oh Allah make the best of my life The last of my life and وَخَيْرَ عَمَلِي خَوَاتِمَ And the best of my amal to be the last of my amal وَخَيْرَ أَيَّامِي يَوْمَ أَلْقَاكَ فِيهِ And make the best day for me the day I visit you and the day I meet you. Respected brothers and sisters, can we describe Allah in that way? Do we have the knowledge to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If the answer is no, based on what are we saying that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If Allah loves us this much, don't you think it's fair that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too? Don't you think that it's fair to, for us to make an effort that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Indeed. And I want to also share this with you. 
When, you, when we began to praise Allah, when we began to read the Qur'an every single day, this will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we come close to Allah, we become a beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah calls Jibreel. Jibreel, come. He says, Jibreel, alayhi salam, I love this person. I want you to love him too. Jibreel alayhi salam then goes to the angels. I love this person. All of you should make you love this person. And the angel comes and makes the announcement that Allah, Jibreel alayhi salam, and all the angels, they love this person. You should also love this person. Another hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Abu Hurairah the Prophet Prophet says that Allah said, this is the hadith of Qudsi, that man aada li waniya, faqad aada tuhu bil harb. That anyone who shows hostility towards my slave, I declare war against that person. Against my wali, I declare war against that person. وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبَدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ مَفْتَرَةُ عَلَيْهِ That a person, he does those things which I have made obligated upon him. He does those things to come close to me. وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبَدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ مِنْ نَوَافٍ حَتَّى أُحِبُّ And this person, he continues to come close to me through the voluntary actions until I love that person. And what happens when I love a person? Then I become his ears through he who listens to. Through, through he, he listens. Then I become his eyes through he, through he sees. Then I become his hands through he which he grabs. Then I become his legs through which he walks. Subhanallah. When he asks me, I will give it to him. Most certainly I will give it to him. If he seeks my protection, I will protect him. Respected brothers and sisters, what are we waiting for? If Allah loves us this much, you think the doors of Allah are closed? We should make an effort to come close to Allah. We should make an effort, we should make an effort to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because once again, going back to the beginning of my khutbah when we talk about the heart if the dunya is in our heart and, not, and everything else in our heart is, does exist except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is a cause of concern it is a cause of concern what should be in our heart is Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the love of Allah and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May Allah grant all of us the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the love for our own Rabb. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'na wa iyyakum la ayatun wa dhikr al-Hakim astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa yisa'i al-Muslimina fa'astaghfiru inna wa lakum fu'ahim Alhamdulillah, 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 wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru wa na'udhu billahi min shu'an fusina min yahdi illa fala mudhila lah wa man yuhil fala hadiya lah wa nashu'an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la shayka lah wa nashu'an anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasoolu amma ba'd Respected brothers and sisters, in Sahih al-Bukhari, the very first chapter of Sahih al-Bukhari is Kitab al-Iman. The Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, they would say that we would meet with one another and they would tell each other, Ijilis bina nu'minu sa'ata Sit down with me, let's revive our Iman. How would the Sahaba revive their Iman? They would talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to learn how to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not really realize who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So this is a general request that every single day take some time out. Learn about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Read the Quran, ponder over the meaning of the Quran and learn who our Rabb is. So that we can gain a better, a better, a better appreciation for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we can gain more love in our heart for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. May Allah Subhanahu give all His ability to act what's been said and heard. Now, in our community, there are um, there are a few people who are sick. Please make dua for them. Um, the brother who stands there every single Friday collecting money, 
uh, that brother uh, brother Arif, he has been hospitalized. Please make dua for him. Um, our there was a brother in our community, as I said, he fell off a horse. Alhamdulillah, he went through a, a successful surgery. May Allah subhanahu wa taala give him the ability to recover, inshallah. And all those who are sick, please make dua for them. On the other on another note, I want to just remind all of you that um, tonight, inshallah. We have a very historical moment that's, that will be taking place, inshallah, tonight. Uh, I want all of you, I'm expecting all of you to be here. Inshallah, we have invited others from other communities, and which is that our last phase, to help us move into our next building, the contract of that last phase will be signed, inshallah, tonight, in front of the entire community, inshallah. This is a historical moment for all of us here in this community. Alhamdulillah, the masjid where it is, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our masjid and all the other masajid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to move into that building, inshallah, by the month of Ramadan. So I would, I'm hoping that all of you will be here. We also have an event that has been put together by Epic Youth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless their hearts. So please try to be here tonight uh, for, all, for all of that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to act on what has been said and heard. Allah